All right, in this video, we're going to talk about understanding customer preferences and requirements. So we're going to go over some of the things that really um, are requirements for customers in order to uh, buy our services or our products and what makes them tick. Uh, we've talked a little bit up to this point about core competencies and strategies and ways to um, really differentiate our organization and create value for our customers. And so these are just some of the things that help to further explain that point of what works for customers. And then after we've won those customers, um, how, do we, how do we value them? How do we put a price tag on customer loyalty? And so everything in this lecture recording is not in the textbook, okay? So everything you see on this page and then everything uh, that follows the value of a loyal customer, uh, a formula that we'll go over in just a second here, that is not in your textbook, but you will see it again. So it's important for you to pay attention to this and to understand how to calculate the VLC. So kind of just going back and, and starting over again, um, understanding customer preferences and, and what makes them choose our products over someone else's. You know, as an organization, it is our job to create value for our customers so that they continue to use our services. It's very important to understand our customer requirements. And, and typically when we're creating a product, we also know that we can't satisfy all of our customers. We have to break customers down into segments or markets and determine, okay, based off of geography or uh, human behavior or um, demographics, all these different kinds of metrics, what, what target audience are we looking for? And then after we've received those customers and they've purchased our products, are we retaining their services uh, for the long haul? All customers are different. We have different desires, unique tastes. And so uh, companies have to understand how they can uh, create products and services that people want to continue to use um, over time. And so um, let's talk about the three classes of customer requirements. So you're all customers. I'm a customer. We buy products and services every single day. And so let's talk about those three customer requirements. The first one is called dissatisfiers. Okay, dissatisfiers. These are requirements that are expected in a good or a service. If these features are not present, the customer is dissatisfied, sometimes very dissatisfied, and they will generally not purchase our products. Satisfiers are requirements that a customer say they want. Okay, so satisfiers are the things that customers say they want. Exciters and delighters are new or innovative goods and services and features that customers do not expect. So it delights them and it excites them if it's got something along those lines. When we think about dissatisfiers, satisfiers, exciters, and delighters, it goes hand in hand with what we consider order qualifiers and order winners. Order qualifiers are the basic customer expectations. These are our dissatisfiers and our satisfiers. These are the minimum performance expectations that a customers uh, require and the things that we need to be able to provide to stay in business. Order winners are the goods and the services and features and performance characteristics, essentially your satisfiers and your exciters, that cause customers to choose those features and benefits uh, over your competitors. So uh, order winners are essentially what wins you orders, what makes your product unique and better than everyone else's. It satisfies and delights our customers and therefore they purchase those products from us. Order winners can definitely be considered a competitive advantage for the firm. It's a strategic um, uh, asset to be able to have order winners as part of our, our product or our service. And so that's why we're talking about these in parallel with the chapter on strategy and core competencies. You have to be able to provide the service that your customers want. Let me give a real quick example of what this looks like in real life. I travel a lot for work. Okay. Um, a couple years ago, I, I, I kept track of how many nights I was on the road, and this was uh, this was pre-COVID uh, times, but pre-COVID, um, I traveled 50 nights uh, a year. So that's a lot of nights being away from home. And so when I'm looking for a hotel room that I'm going to stay, a dissatisfier for me, essentially a non-starter, would be I expect a hotel to be clean and I expect it to be safe. If they're not those things, I don't even bother looking at them. A satisfier is something that I want an exercise room uh, near the location where I'm going to go have my meeting, a restaurant on site, or maybe even room service. Those are satisfiers. If they have those things, I'm satisfied. I like them. Those are, those are neat things to have. But exciters and delighters are the things that pair up very nicely with the order winners. 
if I'm picking a hotel and it's close to where I'm having that meeting and they have a free happy hour, which a lot of times hotels do and, and uh, if you're a business traveler, or they provide free breakfast so I don't have to use my daily per diem, uh, my own money to pay for breakfast, um, then those are the things that in my mind excite me and delight me and therefore that hotel is going to win my business over another one. Hotels are all very competitive, they're all very closely priced, they all have similar features, but the dissatisfiers are the things that if they don't have my minimum requirements, I'm not even going to look at them. The exciters and delighters are the things that are going to make me choose those hotels and therefore they will be the order winner of my business. So hopefully that helps to understand what satisfiers uh, dissatisfiers and exciters and delighters uh, are a little more closely. So let's talk about the value of a loyal customer. Uh, this is in many uh, operations and supply chain textbooks, but it is not in ours, so I'm going to teach it to you anyway. The value of a loyal customer quantifies the total revenue or profit each target market customer generates over the buyer's life cycle. By multiplying the, val the value of a loyal customer times the absolute number of customers, gained or lost, the mark, the total market value can be found. So we're trying to determine how much a customer is worth to us. Are they going to come back year over year and continue to purchase our products from us? Or are they going to defect and go buy someone else's product? Think about um, something like, I have an iPhone. I've had an iPhone for over a decade, right? I am a loyal customer. Apple knows pretty well that most of us who buy Apple products are not going to defect. We're generally going to stay with them. So they, have, they will be able to determine the value of a loyal customer. The flip side of that might be a rental car place. Most people are not very loyal to rental car companies. Avis, Hertz, Budget, doesn't really matter. Whoever's got the best deal and the best car that day, they'll go to. So they don't have a whole lot of customer loyalty. But the value of a loyal customer tries to quantify, uh, when customers come back to us, the total market value uh, for each customer. So the formula for value of a loyal customer is P, which is price. That's the revenue per unit, our selling price. The CM is the contribution margin to profit per unit. RF is the repurchase frequency, and that is the number of purchases divided by the number of years. So if you buy one every four years, then it's a 0.25 repurchase frequency. If you buy two units every four years, then it's 0.5 as a repurchase frequency. The buyer's life cycle is you have to understand how many customers are going to stay with us versus defect. Okay, so I can give you either the customer retention rate or I can give you the defection rate, but either way you'll be able to calculate out the buyer's life cycle. I can give you either one. So the buyer's life cycle is calculated by taking one divided by the defection rate. And the defection rate is calculated by taking one minus the customer retention rate. So either one can be given to you. So let's do an example. What is the value of a loyal customer in the small contractor target market segment who buys an electric drill on average every four years for $100? when the gross margin on the drill averages 50% and the customer retention rate is 60%. So real quickly, let's just talk about what some of these things mean. The 60% um, customer retention rate means that six out of 10 times a customer will go back and buy that same drill or uh, a drill from that manufacturer again when they need to buy a new drill four years from now. Okay, four years from now. The price for that drill is $100, and the manufacturer is making a 50% contribution margin. Then we'll do a different example. And what if we can increase our customer retention rate to 80%? What if we can add more features to that product that helps us to order win that business, to retain that customer? Can I put more features on there that make them excited or delighted to repurchase my drill versus the competitions. So what does it mean to me to retain more customers going from a 60% retention, retention rate to an 80% retention rate? So the first thing that was given to us that we need to calculate is the buyer's life cycle. So if customer retention rate is 60%, so I gave you the customer retention rate, we need to figure out the defect rate so we're going to take one minus the customer retention rate 
and therefore we're going to take 1 minus 60% and the customer defection rate is 40% or 0.4. Therefore the average buyer's life cycle is 1 divided by 0.4 or every 2.5 years. The repurchase frequency is every four years, so that's 0.25. So we now have everything we need to calculate the value of a loyal customer, and that's the purchase price of $100, the contribution margin of 50%, the reach purchase frequency, which is 0.25, and the buyer's life cycle, which is 0.4, or 40%. Therefore, each customer is worth $31.25 per year per customer to us. That's how you calculate the value of a loyal customer. Now, going back to what I just said about improving the customer retention rate. What if we can you know, increase the quality or add more features or have better customer service, right? So that we, we go from retaining six out of 10 customers to eight out of 10. How does that change the value of a loyal customer for us? So if we go up to 80%, the average customer defection rate is now 0.2, not 0.4, and the average buyer's life cycle is now 1 divided by 0.2, and therefore, when you add all of that into the value of a loyal customer uh, calculation, you now essentially double your market value by retaining more customers, just 2 out of 10 more customers, but you doubled your market share because you're going to get um, oh, even more than 20% customers by retaining those extra few. And that is how you calculate the value of a loyal customer.